Have a look at this. Big burning pine stone. We're actually here in South Louisiana on the day that they just did a controlled burn in this longleaf pine forest. Now you might think wildfires are destructive and not really good. In a lot of senses, that would be true. A lot of times you're not gonna want forest fires in certain areas, but longleaf pine forest thrives on fires. And you can see this entire area has just been charred. We've still got this big smoldering log. They are just doing this control burn and it's some really good work. But it's also one of the best times to find a pygmy rattlesnake. Now the reason is, is pygmy rattlesnakes are typically gonna be living in this really dense vegetation, but there's none right now. So we have a good chance of finding one. Throughout the southern United States, there sits an incredibly special habitat, and one that we're losing rapidly. The longleaf pine forest is home to thousands of unique animal species. However, millions of acres of this special ecosystem have been cleared for tree farms, making good, natural pine forest a much rarer occurrence. Thankfully, the areas that we do have left in my home state of Louisiana get cared for on a regular basis, which includes controlled burning. My aim today is to show you the nature of these burns, and how the wildlife in these areas can react to these. And I will also be looking for my home state's rarest viper along the way. See that? That's either a really massive five-line broadhead. Yeah, it's a female broadhead. You did not take off at all. Gotcha. Nice. Have a look at that. This is a really cool lizard species. It's going to be living out in these longleaf pine hammocks. That's a broadhead skink. Really cool. It's kind of difficult to tell the broadhead skinks from the five lines. And looking at the face and kind of how it's structured, I'm going to say that this is a smaller female broadhead skink. Very common species out here. They get much bigger than this. They can actually sometimes be a foot in length. This one's probably about mm, five or six inches long. This would be an adult female. The females actually don't get the big broad head like the males do. Now these species are actually one of the top predator lizards out here. Uh, they would be eating animals and smaller skinks, especially the adult males with the big blocky heads. But a lot of different things would eat this skink. Corn snakes, rat snakes, racers, uh, pygmy might even eat a smaller one, I'm not sure. Really cool lizard. I always love seeing them out here. They're gonna be hiding up and along these pine logs and all kinds of stuff. And this little fellow would probably just be out hunting and basking because it is a bit cooler today. Really cool lizard, we're gonna go ahead and put it back and keep looking for our target. All right, see you little lizard. That was great to see you out here. Up, up, up. Go, you're free. Very slow. Now, as you can see, everything around me is pretty charred, and you might think, well, that's going to kill things, right? And it is true that there are going to be a lot of species that do lose their life to these fires, anything that can't really fly or go underground. Uh, most of the species that do well in logs and underground are typically going to do well through burns, and this creates, after the burn, incredible habitat for these animals to continue living in. And that's why it's a good thing. Now, in the past, we had gopher tortoises here, which would really help with a lot of the other species survival because you've got the tunneling species. And that's one of the things they're going to be trying to bring back in many different areas like this are more burrowing species. And then you've got the things that live in those that can eventually be brought back, you know, dusky gopher frogs, black pine snakes, all those super rare species. In fact, there's even talk that diamondback rattlesnakes used to live here. Now, they're definitely not here anymore. But it's a really interesting thought of being able to bring them back into the area. And these controlled burns are a part of recreating this habitat that used to cover the United States, the pine savanna. Whenever a burn happens, the end is super open and clear, which makes it a lot easier for me to spot animals out in the open and on the move. That's him. Check him out. Oh, look at that. That is pretty. Gray rat. That is nice. They've got a really cool brown coloration in this area. Now these snakes are pretty, pretty general in this area in Louisiana. They can live in these longleaf habitats, although they don't really need to. They can pretty much live anywhere actually. They can live around houses, they can live in fields, they can live in forests, they can live in swamps, they can live anywhere. They're a very generalist snake. They, people oftentimes refer to these as chicken snakes because they'll kind of get in and up around chicken coops and stuff. Now, the corn snakes out here, also known as a red rat, they live out here, and they're pretty cool to see too. And you can kind of see, 
since this area was actually burned first, it's all kind of simmered down a bit here. It was just kind of out laying, and what you'll see when you put a rat snake down is they kind of crinkle their body a little bit. See, look, that's kind of how they lay on the ground. They kind of like grab the ground. And what this allows them to do is kind of grip things better, but it also allows them to climb. Very neat little snake. Great to see that stuff is out today. It is a bit cooler, but the sun is peeking out, so it's actually starting to warm up a bit now. So we're gonna go ahead and let this little guy go and keep moving. All right, see you little guy. I'm gonna show y'all something really quick. This is why pine bark is important in this habitat. Watch this. Check that out. Oh. <laughs> he came right out. Yeah, they utilize it. It's really cool to see. Bye, bud. While checking out this burned habitat, I've been keeping my eye out for one thing, a western pygmy rattlesnake. An incredibly rare rattlesnake for this habitat, and a super hard one to spot. But with this burn, I was thinking one might be out in the open this time of day. And sure enough, thanks to some crazy weird weather conditions, a controlled burn, and some good searching. Oh my goodness. This right here, ooh, he didn't like that. That is a little western pygmy rattlesnake, aka Louisiana pygmy rattlesnake. Probably one of the rarest snakes out here. Absolutely stunning. A Little bit of a darker color than what they can have out here. Maybe it's just in shed, I'm not sure. It's got a really cool arrow pattern on its head. Some nice orange, got some nice orange colorations. This is how you're gonna see these snakes out here, sitting, coiled up, but what you'll notice is before this burn, this was super dense vegetation and pine needles. Now typically finding the snake would be the biggest game of find the needle in the haystack, but with this burn, reptiles are gonna be forced to be out in the open for a little while. So this is a short time that I can actually see these snakes before everything grows back up. Now I love getting to just watch these snakes and look at them like this. But I actually don't want him to stay like this because he could end up taking off from me getting away. This is kind of like a bad angle so we could get under the log. So what I'm gonna do, hello buddy. Got a hook and a stick, because pygmies are a bit hard to handle sometimes. Hello, oh, he's waking up. Hey, how are you? Hello. Oh. Hello. Wow, that's a big one. Now this may be a tiny snake, but they have a pretty decent strike range for how they are. Have a look at that. This is a fat one. Look at how fat he is. Oh, he just ate something for sure. See how that lighter color kind of stands out in this more charred environment, but when it's just pine needles and just grass, they're an incredibly camouflaged snake. Their patterns break up very well. Now, Western pygmy rattlesnakes, this is actually the furthest east that you can find this species. Once you start getting out more west in the north, in northwest Louisiana, as well as in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, some of those areas, these snakes do become more findable. They're actually more numerous in those more plains habitats. And then you start getting into the more the Massasagua territory, the further west you go. Very aware snake. Like I've said before, this is a snake that I like to keep on my toes about. In fact, I need a longer stick. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. See how whippy this snake is. Very quick moving. I just kind of need the stick to like support the front of this body. There we go. It helps to kind of dual wield with pygmies because uh, they move around so much. Look at that fat. Incredibly fat. The one that we got to film this year was a little skinny, probably a very old snake. This is probably a this is probably a younger, much healthier snake for sure. Now this is actually the same area that a lot of other people found pygmy rattlesnakes very recently, in fact. And uh, I actually have pictures of some of the ones that other people found. So I'll have to actually go and check if this is a refine. I actually think it might be. It looks a bit bigger, but that could just be because it's fat. Now this snake is oftentimes referred to as a ground rattlesnake, more in areas like central Louisiana and Arkansas, but the proper name would be a pygmy rattlesnake. Yeah, and definitely not a snake to be messing with. If you ever do see one, they're super athletic. Consider yourself lucky if you do see one in the state of Louisiana, as they are a much more uncommon species to see out here. But uh, even if you do see them, best to just leave them there. As you saw, when he was coiled up, I could just sit there and talk about him for a little while, and he didn't go anywhere. That's oftentimes what they'll do. Take some pictures, enjoy looking at them, 
and uh, just leave them be. The reason that I do this, the reason that I'm picking this snake up with the hook and the stick and handling it is very specifically to show you guys the nature of the snake, its habits, show you that it's a very quick moving snake, and show you all of its different features. This snake is ready to spring. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could get to about right there. What pygmy rattlesnakes do that I find very interesting compared to other venomous snakes is they spring. Notice how she's kind of sitting at an angle and she's not like coiled up in a ball but she's got two coils here and she would spring off of here and here and lunge forward if she really wanted to. This snake's actually being very very chill but uh, I've seen what these snakes are capable of. They're very very athletic and they can probably strike about two times their length. Now typically with snakes, that's not the norms. Other rattlesnake species, typical is maybe two thirds their body length. Some can strike their full body length, but these snakes can strike much longer than their own body length. And that's really cool. It's also something that I have to be very careful of to not think that I'm far enough away when I'm not. A snake like this would probably not kill you even though it's a very, very big rattlesnake for this species. This snake would most likely not kill you, but you would have a really rough time. Medical bills are expensive. They're very similar to everything that I've mentioned about these snakes in the past with the Carolinas, the Duskies, all that. Venom isn't too different. Low toxicity, low amount, but still will tear you up. Their venom is actually meant for frogs, frogs and toads. These guys are frog specialists. In fact, out here, I'd have to guess you'd be mostly eating cricket and leopard frogs. They can eat baby bullfrogs and bronze frogs, but those are their favorites. They also are capable of eating lizards and skinks, so they are more of a cold-blooded specialist rather than what other rattlesnakes would be eating, like mice and things like that. They're gonna be after more amphibians and reptiles. Wowzer, what a stunning animal. Incredible to see out here. So glad we're getting to show you guys these snakes. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to go and check out the one we did with the Carolina pygmies over in North Carolina. Awesome snakes there, and we will see you guys next time. Alright, I'm going to put him back under his log. Hopefully, he'll just kind of coil up again and hang out on him. Really cool to see.